Unit 4 Bunty's Blue Bike It was the most beautiful bike and it belonged to Bunty's uncle. A magic Kingfisher Blue with a matching pair of baskets and two smart rear view mirrors. A real beauty and the first of its kind in the neighborhood. Overnight, Bunty had become a prince amongst us. We clustered around him in class the next day, eager for details. 80 kilometers to a liter and rides like a dream, said Bunty, swinging his legs over the back of his bench. Vroom, vroom, such power, yaar! Bunty's uncle had come from Mumbai riding the new motorbike. He was staying for three weeks. Three glorious weeks. Every afternoon, when Bunty's uncle slept, we could eye at the blue wonder. Sometimes, Bunty managed to take out his uncle's red helmet. We would wear it in turn and sit on the bike, hands itching to turn on the ignition and zoom! In the evenings, we watched Bunty go out for a ride with his uncle and our hearts were filled with envy. Bunty had always been a stylist. Now he began to walk around like the world's greatest. When we cycled home from school, he would lean over the handlebars and we knew he dreamed of the blue bike. One Monday morning, when I was busy reading the newspaper, Bunty came and whispered in my ears, I'm learning to ride it, Montu. Come, come, said I. Your uncle's not such a stupid person that he will trust you. Want to bet? Bunty challenged. I'll show you on Sunday. Bunty, like rest of us, knew everything about the bike. Every screw and nut and pin. But to ride it was something different. Like all grown-ups, his uncle had this belief that 14 years old could not handle things like motorbikes. It is unfair, really. They make you feel very small. Bunty could daydream all he wanted just like the rest of us. But ride the bike? Never! One Sunday, after lunch, I remembered Bunty's bet. Since I had nothing special to do, I decided to go and ask him about his bike. I gave my famous thumb and index finger ring whistle under his window. On hearing it, he looked out. Holding the keys, he came down. Noiselessly, the bike was wheeled out of the gate. It was pushed down the road three houses away. He swung on to the seat, inserted the key, turned on the ignition and the petrol tap. He kicked the starter and the engine throbbed. He turned around and signaled me to get on. I felt thrilled as I climbed on to the pillion. Ready? He yelled over the roar of the engine. Yeah! What are you waiting for? And we were off! The road was nearly empty. After a shaky start, the bike moved smoothly. In no time, we reached the crescent road. I glanced at the speedometer. It was 100 kilometers per hour. We cleared the traffic lights that had changed to yellow. But Bunty was in no mood to slow down. 
The light had already changed to red when the bike cleared the crossing. I heard a police whistle, but we sped on, and I heard Bunty laugh aloud. Bunty raced down the road and turned at the corner. Just then, an old woman was crossing the road. Bunty tried to step on the brakes. The bike screeched to a halt, but she was knocked down. The onions, potatoes, and tomatoes from a bag scattered on the road. Bunty was frightened, but he started the bike again. In a few seconds, we were away from the spot. Hey, Bunty, stop! I yelled, gripping his shoulders. Don't be a fool," he said. "I don't want to end up in jail." But the lady, she is all right. She wasn't badly hurt or anything. I was furious. We have to stop and help," I said angrily. "It's so bad to hit and run." But Bunty raced on. I was getting more angry. We were about two kilometers away from the scene of the accident. When I forced him to stop, I am going back. I said, getting off the bike. I was angry, frightened, and feeling guilty. Do whatever you like, but don't drag me into it. Bunty was irritated. I ran across the road to catch a bus. As soon as I saw it coming, I jumped into it. When the conductor stared at me, only then I realized I had no money in my pocket. The conductor was angry, so I was asked to get down. However, before I could do anything, an elderly lady came to my rescue. She said, "Don't worry. I'll pay for your ticket." "Thank you," I said. Gratefully, my cheeks became red with shame. In a short while, I reached the spot of the accident. I saw a crowd there. A young man had bandaged the lady, and was helping her to get into an auto rickshaw. A blue bike! I heard someone say. Two young boys, the rogues! They should be whipped. the police officer said anyone noted the number he asked i stepped forward sir i can explain you see i was the billion rider vroom i turned around and saw bunty with the blue bike he got off the bike he looked into my eyes he then walked up to the police officer i'll explain he said It was all my fault. I took a deep breath and went and stood by his side.